Our offseason outlooks continue with the Dolphins coming off a 10 and 6 season that saw them just miss the playoffs. Definitely headed in the right direction as a team, but is Tua the franchise quarterback they drafted him to be? The jury still out after a lackluster rookie season. That's why the Dolphins are high on a couple of lists to acquire a star quarterback on the trade market. Check out the numbers from Sportsline on the odds to trade for Deshaun Watson. The Jets are the favorites, but there are the Dolphins at 3-1 to one to make the trade for Deshaun Watson. Now, he's definitely on the trade block. I don't know if Russell Wilson's going to be. His agent says he hasn't asked for a trade. He told ESPN he hasn't demanded a trade, anything like that. But he has a few teams in mind that he would like to go to uh, if, indeed, he is traded. Dolphins are on this list. Not quite as high, but 10 to 1 in the potential Russell Wilson sweepstakes. Bryant McFadden and Danny Cannell joining us here to talk about the Dolphins offseason outlook. And uh, I think, Danny, it begins and ends at the quarterback position. You're our quarterback. Is two of the guy or should they be looking at trading for a Deshaun Watson? I think they should be in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes aggressively. Um, and it's more about Deshaun Watson knowing what you're getting with him as opposed to just throwing in the towel on Tua. Now, that being said, I think you have to be smart. I don't think you're in a desperate position. But, man, this team is poised and ready to make a splash and to take it to that next level. And with Tua, I don't think that happens this year. I think you might be waiting and trying to develop him, and you have to put better talent around him. Uh, so for me, I, I just feel like they should be looking for an upgrade. I think there are too many uncertainties with Tua. The play on the field was an issue. His health continues to be an issue, where it wasn't even the, the hip that was a problem. It was other issues that plagued him. Same way that happened when he was at Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama struggle to stay healthy. I just worry about his body being able to withstand the, the grind and the mental, uh, the, the physical toll that it takes on your body as a smaller quarterback in the league. And then you look at kind of the tendency to be a little bit safer and not stretch the field vertically down the ball and the difference in the way the team moved the ball with Ryan Fitzpatrick versus Tua. There were just a lot of issues that I saw. So if I was the Miami Dolphins, I would be aggressively pursuing Deshaun Watson and even calling up Seattle. I know it wasn't on Russell's list of teams, but I think Russell Wilson would be crazy if there was a deal in the works to pass on an opportunity of a team that looks poised and ready to take that jump to the next level. They've got several draft picks. They've got some money to spend. I think this team is ready to take the jump. I just don't think two is the quarterback that's going to take them there. Yeah, I agree with you. When you look at Deshaun Watson, I mean, there, there are probably, what, maybe three or four teams, maybe five, that wouldn't be in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes, right? So the majority of the NFL would try to trade for Deshaun Watson if they have the resources to do so. And that I'm not saying with the Dolphins maybe trying to acquire Deshaun Watson, they're just saying they don't believe in Tua Tonga of our Lord. No, but Deshaun Watson is that type of talent. He's like a generational talent at the quarterback spot. He is a a, a guy, when you get Deshaun Watson, you know exactly what you're getting. You're getting a superstar-like player still in his prime years. Right now with Tua, we don't know what Tua will be in three or four or five years. But with Deshaun Watson, if he's healthy, he still will be a Pro Bowl, All-Pro caliber player. So they have to try to roll the dice and see if they can get Deshaun Watson, to see if they can get the Texans to bite on whatever it is they're offering. The same can be said for Russell Wilson because he is that type of player right now. You still have to wait and see. We didn't really see a lot from Tua. We saw some flashes here or there, but the jury is still out on Tua Tonga of Lord. The jury is not out on those two guys, Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson. So me personally, I agree with you, Danny. If they can get either a guy, go get him. And look, they still need some other stuff on offense as well. Ryan Wilson put together a list of team needs heading into free agency and the draft. And every position but one is on the offensive side of the ball. He's got a, a tackle, a guard, a running back, a wide receiver. Uh, Danny, it, it, is the list that big in your opinion? Or is it as simple as just plugging in a, a, a Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson? Uh, it's big, but the, the good news is they've got draft capital and they've got some money to spend. The offensive line is a little bit concerning because they did draft several guys last year 
including a first rounder on the offensive line. So to me, it's more about the playmakers on the outside. Running back as a position, I wouldn't spend a ton, but maybe you can get a veteran there on the outside. But I, you know, and then a lot of this depends on who's your quarterback going to be. If you're Deshaun Watson, I think you could spend a little more money on the defensive side of the ball, and he could mask some of those issues. It's if it's Tua, and you're kind of stuck with him, which is not a horrible place to be in. Then you've got to get him better protection up front. You've got to get him better weapons to work with. Remember, last year they were they were playing two quarterbacks. I mean, that was the, they were Ryan Fitzpatrick was starting, and you go with the hot hand. That is not the solution, clearly. So they need to figure out the quarterback, and then I kind of, it kind of depends on what they do there, where they allocate their money uh, to spend to support them. Because the defense does have some needs too. They should need to get after the passer with Kyle Van Noy up. You know, they've got some issues at defensive back. So I think they should be spending some money on the offensive side of the ball. But again, how much depends on who the quarterback is. Uh, and BMAC, I, I know the, 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 the wide receiver class is deep in free agency, and you have them going uh, and trying to get, at least in your opinion, they should be trying to get a bunch of receivers to come and join them. <laughs> Uh, no question. I mean, and, and you got to think about the Dolphins going forward with Tua Tunga Vailoa. If they're not able to trade for Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson, Tua will be they, their guy. And anytime you have a young quarterback, you got to give him some stars surrounding him to be able to help him grow. Uh, number one, I start with the offensive line, Corey Lindsley, an outstanding center. He had a heck of a year for the Green Bay Packers. He might be a bit pricey, but he's worth every penny. You add Corey Lindsley, you got Solomon Kindly at the left guard, you kick Robert Hunt to the right guard. The interior spot in that line now becomes a strength. One of the best interior offensive linemen, linemen that you could have on your team if they're able to add Corey Lindsey. And then Aaron Jones. We're already starting to hear rumors that there is a mutual interest between Aaron Jones and the Miami Dolphins. I think he would be wonderful in their backfield. And then you look at the pass catchers. Yes, the pass catchers. Corey Davis, Nelson Aguilar, T.Y. Hilton. I think either guy will improve the passing game. You got Devontae Parker. He is your proven number one guy. You got tight end production. But if you can get a guy that can be the Robin to your Batman, I think that would do wonders for Tua Tonga Vailoa. That would do wonders for their offense. And they would become a bit, they would become more explosive to say the least. We saw them become stagnant from time to time, especially depending on the defenses they were facing. But if you can add some pass catches to help your young quarterback, yes, they could be even closer to getting a playoff spot if those things were to happen. I went with a similar mindset, like accumulate talent. I mean, look at the Chiefs. They have so many offensive weapons, and that's why they're one of the most uh, prolific offenses in the NFL. I went for the home run, Allen Robinson. I loved your pick of T.Y. Hilton, too, coming back. Went to FIU. I think he'd make a lot of sense. Maybe get him a little bit cheaper, because you're going to have to break the bank for Allen Robinson. And then at running back, how about Todd Gurley? He's still just 26 years old, which is unfathomable. He'll be 27 when the season starts, but he's still pretty young. And you could take probably get him cheaper after some of the injuries he's had getting older in his career. And then I mentioned the need for some defensive presence there. K.J. Wright has been a, a, just an unbelievable presence for Seattle for over 10 years. He's 31. You could bring him in to kind of stabilize that defense, be a leader out there, get you some rush on the passer. So... They've got money to spend, and I think, and, and don't not to mention, we're all mentioning these wide receivers. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hesitate to draft a wide receiver with the third pick either, uh, and go pick the best one. Whether they think it's Devonte Smith, Jamar Chase, whoever it is, go get another one. Accumulate the talent on the offensive side of the ball. This is an offensive-minded league where you have to put up numbers if you want to be. Look, the number one and number two passing offenses squared off in the Super Bowl. The defense wins championships is a bygone era. You've got to be able to score through the air. So I think the Dolphins should address that through free agency as well. So, Danny, with all the capital that they have, I know you don't know who they're going to get specifically, but you know they can go out and get a bunch to fill these needs. They won 10 games last season. What should Finns fans expect going into next season? I like it, Chris. You gave me that. You gave me the disclaimer so you didn't get yelled at this time around for asking me a question with all these questions uh -huh. around them. I am bullish on the Dolphins. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the coaching staff. I'm a believer in the new culture that they've created. I'm a believer in the young talent that's there. And I think they'll make the best decision moving forward. And I do believe that Tua, if you put a lot of talent around him, can develop. I mean, we are in such a rush to judge quarterbacks and to admit, hey, is this a home run or is this a bust? Uh, so I actually, the, the, the odds to win the AFC East at plus 280, I don't, that's not a bad play there. The Bills probably will be picked to get back. Who the heck knows what's going to happen to Patriots again, what they're going to do at quarterback. The Jets are still sort of a disaster. 
So they're going to be in the playoff hunt again. And I do think this team is poised and ready with the draft capital, with the money to spend to make a run and make the playoffs this year. Whether they win the division or it's a wild card, I think this Miami Dolphins team will be in the playoffs next year. Yeah, expectations for me, best case scenario in the division, I say second. I say I think they finished second like they did in 2020. And the reason why, Buffalo will improve. You know, they're going to make a few moves. I love Sean McDerm McDermott. I love B. Flo. I think when you look at both uh, head coaches, you can consider that to be a wash. But the reason why I think Miami will finish best case scenario second is at the quarterback position. Making this pick with understanding that Tua Tonga Vailoa, under, under the assumption that he will be the quarterback. Josh Allen, Tua Tonga Vailoa, no comparison at all. Not to mention, you look at the pass catchers. You look at how the offense is, is, is orchestrated for the quarterbacks. Buffalo, their, their foundation is already in place. And defensively, I like their defense as well. But Miami defense, they made a lot of plays, especially special team-wise as well. So uh, just the quarterback alone, the comparison there, I picked them to finish second in the AFC East. But just because they finished second does not mean they don't get into the playoffs. They won't be able to get into the playoffs. So, yes, I think they have a legit opportunity to get into the playoffs, especially if they add a few pieces like we mentioned. That was your offseason outlook for the Miami Dolphins trending up. They won 10 games last season, missed the postseason. Up tomorrow, we've got two teams that made the postseason in the NFC and did not have winning records. Washington had a losing record. The Bears were 500. Those two teams coming up on Friday. And then, whoa, is that a quartet of teams? Is a quartet? Yes, it's four, correct? Colts, Titans, Raiders, and Rams coming up on Monday. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.